Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glanz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. You might hear Goofy in the background. She is roaming around the apartment. I find that every single night around 7 p.m., Goofy wakes up from her like mid-afternoon, close-to-night type of nap and just paces around the apartment, tries to get everyone's attention, barks at absolutely nothing. And tonight, right before I started podcasting, it happened to be right before the seven o'clock hour, she got up from her nap and she was like, it is my time to shine. I know you're gonna podcast, but I'm just gonna prance around here. So if you hear her little feet on the wood floor, just know it's Goofy showing you some of her love. Thanks for coming back for another episode of this podcast. I am so happy that you are here. And if you have a chance while you're listening to this episode, it would mean the world to me if you can just review and rate this podcast on iTunes. Why I'm asking you to do that is because the more reviews the show gets, the more we show up in the search results and brand new people can find this podcast. So as you're listening to the show, feel free to scroll down, rate the podcast, review the podcast, all of that good stuff. And as a reminder, come hang out with us in the secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group. There's over 1,500 people waiting in that group to say hello to you, give advice, and just have a community to turn to when you just need to say hello to somebody new. Today's episode is actually something that I've owed you for a little bit of time. It is the story of me getting married in March. I know I hinted in March about doing pro-con lists to help us decide whether or not we should get married, but then I never actually updated you on any of the details. And I think a lot of that was because after we went through with the marriage, everything got a little bit hectic. And I'll explain all of that, but I wanted to do an episode sharing how Adam and I planned our marriage moment in one week or less. So let me take you back to last year. In the month of January, we decided, January 2020, we decided to have our wedding for October 2020, and we were gonna do it in Florida. We created a guest list, we put a deposit down on a venue, and we were making this happen as a 2020 October wedding. We even created the save the dates, which were scratch offs that we sent to our guest list, and we sent those out the end of February, I think early, early March. Within a week of us sending out the save the dates, the pandemic happened. And very early on in April, we realized, look, we don't know what's gonna happen with this pandemic, but it doesn't seem good. And the thought of having a wedding in October is likely not going to happen. So very quickly, we made the decision to cancel the October wedding. And we did that because even though we couldn't predict the end of the pandemic, it just seemed like a really gloomy, a really messed up year. And it just didn't feel right to have this wedding. (laughs) That interruption was brought to you by Goofy. Did I not tell you this is her barking hour? So we just felt like we should cancel it. And we realized the earlier we cancel it, the more we'd get back perhaps in deposits that we just put down a week ago. So early in April, we decided to cancel the wedding. We got our deposits back from the venue and some of our other vendors. So we were in a good position financially to sort of recoup all of the money that we had put down for this wedding. And we also sent out cancellation cards. So we actually sent out in the tradition of just being unique and different, we sent out cancellation cards that were basically saying, you know, love always wins, we're canceling this wedding, we'll be in touch with future plans. And we sent out lottery tickets with each of the cancellation cards. It's just a fun way of giving people something interesting to do with the news of us canceling this wedding. 
happening. So we did that in April. And then the rest of the year was what the year was. I mean, I can't even sum up the pandemic for you. It was messy and horrible and just a lot. So for the rest of the year, we didn't even think about a wedding. You know, in my mind, I had just committed to planning this big wedding. I had committed to a guest list. And then everything got canceled in such a short amount of time that I just didn't have it in me to want to think of a different plan. Plus, the pandemic just really put a damper on everything. And in my head, I couldn't even really think of what kind of wedding I would even want to have. So 2020 did its thing, it ended. And then the start of 2021, the question started flying back at us of when we're gonna do this, when we're gonna get married, and we didn't have an answer. I just couldn't see myself throwing a wedding in 2021 just because it's so unpredictable how things are going to go. And I don't want to plan something that makes people feel uncomfortable. So working in the wedding industry, I did work a couple of weddings late last year where I noticed that there were people uncomfortable going and people saying no to going because group settings, whether they're 20 people or 50 people, is still a lot for some people. So in those situations, I found that, you know, having weddings in a pandemic or in a socially distant environment often caused discomfort and that was one thing I just didn't want my guests to deal with were feeling like they had to come to a wedding or feeling uncomfortable there so in my head I didn't really feel like I could plan any type of 2021 celebration the other part of the story is that in my head I always thought it would be super special to get married on March 19th That's the day I met Adam, and I'm a big believer in just the meaning of dates and the meaning of your decisions around certain things, and I thought it could be really cool to get married on the day that we met. So we tried to maybe do that in 2020. We were going to secretly elope, but the world shut down before March 19th, so that plan also was canceled. So this year, as May 19th approached, we wondered if we should just go ahead and get married. And that's when I had this initial thought that one of the things we never really talk about or explore is the fact that marriage and a wedding are two separate things, though a lot of people just combine them, right? They do the ceremony and the reception on the same day, but they're in fact two separate things. Marriage is the art of legally binding yourself to another person, and a wedding is a celebration. It's a party. So in my head, I started to think, okay, could we just get legally married on March 19th, get that part over with, and then plan the celebration, plan the wedding in the future? But in my head, I realized, okay, if we're going to do this whole March 19th thing, it's going to look a little unusual. Meaning, number one, our families couldn't be there. My family's in Florida, Adam's parents are in New Jersey, and just the art of bringing them together for this March 19th marriage would be really tough. Number one, because where you get married, you have to, you know, apply for a marriage license. So if we were going to do it in Florida, we would have to know that in advance and go through that process. So we figured it would be easier to do the marriage license in New York, which meant that my parents can't travel up here. You know, it's still a pandemic. So that made it super tough. And the same thing with Adam's parents. We didn't want to have them travel into New York City for the wedding. So that was factor number one, is that if we did go ahead with this March 19th date, it would look very different than anything we've ever wanted or anything we ever thought we were going to do. So then February happens, and in the beginning of February, I was pretty set on this plan. I started to tell some friends that maybe they should be available that date just in case we needed some witnesses. We started to make Adam's brother an officiant legally so that he could officiate the wedding and make this really happen just in case we needed him. And then around Valentine's Valentine's Day, I had this thought process of, I can't do this. I can't do this. And it was super awkward, actually, because on Valentine's Day, I decided, okay, no, this plan is not going to work. I don't want to get married, even though it means a lot to Adam, without my parents there. And I feel like it's so rushed. And no, we're not going to do this. And I made that decision. And about a week later, I had a, a Skype call with a couple of my good friends. And they surprised me with like this virtual bachelorette party. And I had to break the news to them that our plans were off. And it was just so awkward. They did so many, like, they just went all like above and beyond to plan this little virtual celebration for me and here I am saying you know never mind April Fool's like we're not doing this and I felt so bad and I had changed my mind back and forth on this whole March 19th thing quite a lot just because I really couldn't figure out what was right and everyone kept saying well if you do it will you regret it but if you don't do it will you regret it and I was like I think a part of me will regret it either way because it's not a win-win situation it's almost like a if I do it I'll be a little upset that my parents won't be there but if I don't do it I'll be upset that like another potential milestone of a date a date that had so much meaning 
passed us by. So February ends, we don't have a plan. And by this point, people are sort of asking us, Adam's brother's even like, hey, is this happening? Should I prepare a ceremony? And we really didn't have an answer for anyone. And then the first week of March passes, still no answer. And then it becomes a week before March 19th. And that was the deadline I set for myself to actually make sure that I was gonna go through with this or I was not gonna go through with this. I realized if I gave myself any more time, I would keep flip-flopping, I would keep backing out. I've learned over my life that I'm a couple of things. Number one, I'm extremely stubborn. You you can't convince me of anything. I almost have to make the mistakes for myself or I have to just do what I'm going to do and figure it out. And the other thing about me is that I am extremely indecisive. It's really hard for me to make decisions, especially when they're really big decisions because I'm always scared I'm going to make the wrong choice. So when it came to this whole wedding thing, I found that I was so back and forth that I literally could not make up my mind. And honestly, the more I talked about it, the more I said it to other people, the more I was even more confused. You know, I would tell some people that we were going to go ahead with this March 19th marriage and people would sort of talk me out of it. They would say, how could I do it without my family? How could I, you know, go along with this? I should just wait. It's rushed. And then I would tell other people who were like, yeah, Jen, live your life. Do what you want to do. And I just felt like the more people I was turning to, the less I had clarity and the more I had confusion. And the best piece of advice I got, which is I mentioned on that earlier podcast episode, was to do the pro-con list. And when Adam and I sat down a week before March 19th and we made that pro-con list, we didn't have a conclusion, but we at least had all of our thoughts out organized on paper. And for the next couple of days, we made a final decision. We would look at it. We would talk through it. It was less emotional and more rational. And I think for a person like me, where I thrive on making decisions emotionally, I thrive on listening to my emotions. I thrive on being over emotional sometimes. Having all of that aside and being able to make a decision based on what was rational, based on what was logical, based on what we really wanted to do by weighing all the options was super helpful. So not only did we make a pro-con list, but we also wrote out the potential situations. Situation number one would be to get married on March 19th and to have a party later on when things were safe. Option two was to wait for everything and do it all together without a target date in mind. So to sort of see how the year went and go from there. Option three, which Adam proposed that I never really liked, was... And this was, this is actually an incredible idea and I give him A for effort and I think he's incredible, but his idea was to split the day in half and do like a marriage in New Jersey with his parents and then fly to Florida and do one with my parents and sort of like split the day half and half. And I was like, that's awesome, except it's a pandemic and flying is just sort of not safe. So that was sort of scenario three, which we crossed out pretty fast. So as we were sort of weighing through the options, it just seemed so daunting to push this off any longer and to not do something that sounded like something we really wanted. You know, getting married on March 19th was just the least legal portion of our wedding adventure. Not only that, but it had meaning behind it. It had purpose behind it. It was something that we wanted. And so with a week to go, we made the final decision. And there was a huge weight lifted off my shoulder when I finally decided to do this. You know, the decision was made and now it was time to plan our marriage moment in under a week. We decided to do it outside of the location of our very first date, which was Irving Farms Coffee Shop in Gramercy. It's this beautiful, tiny little coffee shop that if you're walking along the sidewalk of Irving Place, like you will walk right by it. It's tiny. It's sort of hidden. It doesn't stand out in any way. And why I love it inside pre-pandemic is that they don't have Wi-Fi. So the main point of going there is just to go there and sit and have conversations. And it was a beautiful spot for a first date. So I emailed the coffee shop knowing it's a pandemic and I asked them if we could get married real quick, real simple outside of that coffee shop on a sidewalk. And they agreed. They said, sure, no problem. So that was taken care of. We had our location. Luckily, we got Adam's brother uh, ordained so he can be our officiant and legally get us married because you need that legal person. So we had that checked off. Then we needed two witnesses there. So I asked my best friend, Carrie, to be there. Adam asked one of his friends to be there. We had that. And then we decided, okay, we'll have a couple more friends who are local to the neighborhood come and just support us there. So each of us asked around two or three other friends to come. 
I had my friend Tracy there, who's also a pastry chef. She's been a guest on the podcast twice. She came and she surprised us with all these cakes and cupcakes and treats. I had my friend Bonnie there, who's been a friend of mine since I moved to New York and represented just a really awesome time in my life. She was there as well. And of course, I had my friend Susan there who took our photos for the day. She was the photographer, but she was also just such a, a savior of the day. And I'll tell you more about that. And we had a couple other people there. And then we also had a Zoom component of it where we had our close, close, close family and friends on it. Like we're talking just parents and then a couple of like really close friends were on it as well. And that was it. You know, one of the mistakes looking back is that we planned this so fast that I didn't necessarily figure out, you know, the whole situation with who should be invited with Zoom. And I ended up not sharing the Zoom link with some family members that I I wish I invited, honestly, but I wasn't thinking clearly. And I wanted to keep the whole thing pretty small, pretty intimate and not really blow it out of proportion. So I didn't even think about sending the Zoom link to a lot of people. Um, I sent it to our parents and a couple other really close friends who I would have wanted to be by my side. And that was really it. So, you know, after the wedding ended, I felt so guilty and so upset because I didn't send the Zoom link out to more people. And I'm sorry about that. You know, that's something that I wish I did differently. But at the time, I was in such a brain fog, such a, you know, hectic state to get this all done in a week that that was something I just did not think about. So that was sort of the game plan was to get married on the sidewalk, have a couple friends there, a couple people on Zoom, and that's it. Now, the other thing I had to account for with just one week to go was what to wear. I had absolutely no outfit. A couple of months before the pandemic, I was shopping at a store and I found this like beautiful sequined silver dress with shoulder pads. It was long sleeve and it was like $50. I fell in love with it and I was like, okay, that'll be like my backup outfit if we end up doing something quick. There wasn't even a pandemic at the time. There was just like a backup outfit. It was cheap. I'd wear it wedding or no wedding, but that outfit was in Florida. And there was no way that I can get it here in time. I mean, if my parents shipped it, it would be so much money and it wouldn't even make it in time. So I literally had absolutely nothing to wear to this marriage moment. And a part of me always knew that I wanted to wear something that made me feel like me. And a white dress just doesn't make me feel like me. Sequence makes me feel like me. So I must have spent four hours a day Googling and searching for sequined outfits, sequined dresses, sequined anything. And I got so many things shipped to me overnight during that week to try on. I mean, these dresses from Macy's and Bloomingdale's and like all of these places that would just have like really quick shipping. And I found a lot of things and I had them all delivered. And I had a friend come over, a neighborhood friend come over and sort of just help me decide. And, you know, I got all these dresses, but just nothing felt right. It just didn't feel right. And I saw this gold sequence suit online. And I was like, that to me is like the ideal thing that I would wear to this marriage moment. Like, I just want to wear this gold suit. So I ordered that gold suit and it came and it was way too big. I even measured myself and picked out the size I thought I was. And it turned out to be so big and baggy that I had to pay another $25 to overnight another size. It came the night before I tried it on and everything just fell into place. And I thought to myself, okay, this gold sequin suit, this is you, Jen Glantz. This is what you are going to wear. I didn't even show anybody or ask anybody for their approval. I definitely showed Adam because we live together and I was like, this is what I'm gonna wear and he instantly was like yes absolutely whereas every dress I I tried on and showed him he was like yeah it's cool but like I don't know but this suit he was just like yeah no uh, no questions Jen this is what I think you should wear too so that was like the night before I made that decision so you know here's the whole thing right we're getting married on a sidewalk a really good friend of mine Susan is taking our photos I'm wearing a gold suit Adam got a suit from J crew and we threw this whole thing together in one week it wasn't our plan a our plan b our plan c our plan d or even our plan z but it was a plan and it worked so fast forward to the actual day One of the things that Adam and I wanted to do was not necessarily read vows to each other, but to make the ceremony a little bit special, we wanted to share a couple of words to each other. So we agreed that we wouldn't write anything formal, but we would speak for about two or three minutes just about our relationship and just the moment. So that morning I woke up and realized I didn't have any time to write anything. So I woke up in the morning 
I put on my sneakers and I walked to the water. So I live near the East River and I live about 15 minutes away. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to spend 45 minutes this morning walking around to the water and I'm going to write what I want to say that way. I'm the kind of person who writes in motion. So for me, the art of walking and the art of being around water is like a magic trick to get my thoughts out. So I walked to the water and I was doing speech to text in my phone and that's how I sort of wrote out what I was going to say. And I got my, I had someone come over and do my hair and makeup because, you know, I wanted, I wanted to feel a little bit different than just your average day. I put on the gold suit. Susan came over, which was just so amazing to have her there because she helped calm me down, but just also helped make me feel like this was great. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't anxious. I was just more so, again, hoping that this was the right thing to do. You know, even on the day of, I wasn't quite sure. We get to the coffee shop. All of our friends that we invited were there and Susan helps hook up the Zoom and set it up so wonderfully so that our guests on Zoom and our parents could see and Adam's brother is the officiant and we have our close friends there as witnesses and the whole thing probably lasted a good 25 or 30 minutes and it had every beautiful element of New York City from strangers walking by and stopping and videoing it and just being part of it, like these complete strangers to, you know, just being on the sidewalk of a city where Adam and I met at that exact location five years to the date and time of that when we're sharing our our love for each other. I just remember standing there looking into Adam's eyes thinking, just be in the moment right now, Jen. And inside of this moment, just feel and accept how perfect and right and simple and beautiful this moment is. And yes, it doesn't have all of the things you wish it had. It doesn't have your family, which means everything to you. And it doesn't have a lot of the other things maybe you wish you had in this moment. This moment right here of you exchanging your love for this person and signing this legal document, this felt right. And while it was quick and simple and on a freaking sidewalk, it felt it felt awesome. It felt great. It felt special. It felt It felt amazing, and I can't even explain it in any other type of powerful word or metaphor, except that it felt right. It just felt right. And after that was over, we ate some of Tracy's cakes and and pastries, and Adam and I took some more pictures with Susan, and then that was it. You know, there wasn't like a big bang moment, and I, I wrote this on Instagram the next day that, you know, marriage is not the best day of your life. Wedding is not the best day of your life. Meeting the person is one of the best days of your life. Developing that relationship is one of the best days of your life. Staying with them even through the hardest moments of your life when you would really understand if anyone turned your back on you but they didn't is one of the best moments of your life. But signing the legal document, it's not. And I wanted to make that very clear because I think people put so much pressure on this day and this moment and needing it to be lavish and Instagram worthy and perfect and beautiful, but you know what? It's more about the person and the relationship you've built and created that has really outstanded so much that should be celebrated, appreciated, and adored. But oftentimes, we disguise that with so much fluff. And we didn't have any fluff. And we went home, and we danced around the apartment, and it felt like a regular, regular Friday, and that was okay with me. And in a weird, odd way, it was everything I never knew I wanted or needed that ended up happening. It was almost like a bit of karma of like, Jen, you can plan this whole October 2020 wedding. You know you don't want. You know you don't want this to happen. You know that everything you're planning, you don't really care about. You're doing it for other people. And guess what? It's not going to happen. And that was a huge sigh of relief. I think I've mentioned this before, but even when we signed the contract for this October 17th wedding, a part of my gut was like, Jen, this doesn't feel right. And it wasn't because of Adam. Adam felt right. It was just like everything about this October 17th thing did not feel right. And I promise you, you can believe me or not, that even when we signed this contract in January of last year, a part of me just thought this isn't going to happen. Like, you know, when you're, you're doing something, you're planning for something and you're like, this is fun to plan, but like, I just don't see this actually happening. I felt that like I felt that with every inch of myself. And, you know, my mom who came with me to look at the venue and sign the contract, I feel like deep down she knew in January that for some reason this wasn't going to happen. Like she could almost see it in my expression. I didn't know there was going to be a pandemic. I'm not saying that. I just had this weird feeling about that date. It never felt right. 
Whereas March 19th, 2021, I wasn't sure what it was going to feel like. I wasn't sure what it was going to look like, but it had this feeling of just being right. And I think that that's enough. And I think, you know, there was obviously things about the day I wish I did different. I wish I thought through. I wish I planned more. But you can't go back. And we did a pretty good job for throwing this together in just one week. And everyone told me always that when you plan a wedding, when you plan your marriage moment, you're always going to piss some people off. And I definitely did that, right? But in the end, for that moment of Adam and I just being there on the sidewalk where we first met five years to the date, I felt so selfish for one of the first times in my life for doing something that I wanted that I thought was the best option. And it was, it truly was. And I think, you know, after that happened, after that marriage moment happened, I felt really overwhelmed just by the rush of planning it in one week, the rush of it happening, that it was really hard for me to talk about. It was hard for me to just like be myself. I needed to recover. So that's why I'm coming at you with this a couple months after because I just needed to process all of it. So that's a bit of our marriage journey and our marriage story. And it happened in a week. We made the decision. Also, when we made the decision, we didn't tell anybody. So this was another thing that I sort of regret is that after we made the decision, I slowly started to tell my best friends. Like I slowly one by one called them and was like, hey, we're actually going to get married Friday. I know it's Wednesday, but can you be on the Zoom call? And they were like, are you kidding me? Like I'm your best friend and you didn't tell me about this. And I had to sort of let them know that number one, we made this decision a week ago. And number two, I tried not to tell people because I didn't want to be talked out of it. And I think that was something that I just needed to personally do was like limit the amount of people who were giving me their opinions or their suggestions and just do what I wanted to do. So I think we made a couple of our friends just a little weirded out. You know, we only had like three friends there and a couple on Zoom. So a lot of people didn't find out about this until we posted it on social media. So a lot of people in our lives were sort of like, huh, how come we didn't know? You know, do you love us? And it wasn't about that. Again, it was like a selfish moment of love that we don't regret, but we do wish maybe we did a little different. So here's the thing. You can't always know how your decision is going to land. You can't always know if it's the right decision. You can't always know if it's going to make you feel great after, but you have to make a decision. And in the end, you have to make a decision that you really feel is rational and logical and is the best decision for what you're working with when you're working with it. And sometimes that means emotion needs to leave. And sometimes that means you need to lean into emotion even more. But in the end, when you make a decision and you go through with it, you're just making progress on your life. You can't pause time as much as I so wish I had the power to make March 10th just pause so that I can spend the next nine days making a decision about March 19th. I wish I had that superpower, but I didn't. And every single day I wasn't making a decision was every single day that I could not pause time. So eventually you have to take control of your life, make these decisions because you will not know if you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing, but you sometimes have to do something. And that's something you have to do should lean towards something that you feel is the most right, feels like the most rational and logical thing to do. So here I am coming at you legally married to my partner, Adam, who I've known for five years of my life. And all I can really tell you about him, if you ever get the chance and the opportunity to meet Adam, is that he lights up a room. He's the kind of person that makes every single person around him feel like a million dollars. When he meets somebody, he genuinely loves them, cares about them, wants to know about them, doesn't know how to put on an act or a show, is who he is, and he is the kind of person that walks into a room with this larger-than-life smile. It looks like his teeth are stuck together with gum because his smile is just so big. You see every one of his teeth, and he makes you smile. It's so contagious. He is somebody who has stuck with me during literally the hardest moment of my life. I met Adam and then three months later, my entire life was flipped upside down and I went through really tough time and he stuck around through that. I mean, we stuck together even when we were moving around the country for two years, living in new places every single 30 days. We've been through a lot of growth and change and, and challenges and conflicts and a lot of different things and 
why I wanted March 19th to be March 19th is because it just shows that five years we've had these adventures together and that date will forever mean just so much to us. I hope that March 19th, 2022, it'll be us with all of our friends and all of our family having this elaborate party. Why not make March 19th every year the celebration, the wedding, right? Why does it have to be just one and done? Maybe that will be the tradition. But in the end, that's what we did. And that's just a bit of our marriage story. And if you want to hear more, I'm detailing every single part of my life, getting engaged, getting married, what it all means in my newest book, Finally the Bride. This is a book that's been released chapter by chapter over the last 15 months. There's 15 chapters of the book out right now. So if you're interested in reading this, an honest look of what it means to be engaged, head to finallythebride.com slash shop and grab your copy. It's a laugh out loud adventure that makes you think, cry, and feel a whole lot of things Whether you're married, you might get married, or you just care about the art and the complications of love. I hope you'll check it out. Thanks so much for listening to the show. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode. All my love, Jen Glantz. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.